Okay, we're here with Tracy today. Hi Tracy, how are you? Hi Joe, I'm good, thank you. Fantastic. So we're going to talk to you today about the different types of fostering that you do and your experiences as a foster carer. So can you tell me how long have you been fostering and what first interested you in fostering? We've been fostering about five years and um, fostering is something that I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. Various situations didn't really apply or allow um, and then things seemed to converge and um, I looked into it and we um, chose to go with an uh, independent fostering agency. So could you tell us a bit about how fostering with an independent agency might compare or be different to fostering now with the council and the local authority? I personally prefer to be with the local authority. We have access to many more foster carers and support, so it is generally a better thing for us. Lovely, fantastic. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the types of fostering that you do? So we decided to um, do what they call short-term or time-limited fostering, which is where we generally um, get called on to take children when they first come into foster care, so when they're first known to the system and the social workers need to remove them from wherever they're living, that could be another foster placement or it could be a birth family. Yeah. And, um, and then we take them and we generally um, take them through the court process. They're with us for the time that it takes them to go through that, which is where it's determined what happens long term, whether they are reunified with their birth family, whether they go into another type of fostering such as long term or permanent or perhaps if they're older, they would maybe go into staying put or supported lodgings. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the fostering that we do has been sibling groups because we've got quite a few spare bedrooms. Yeah. And um, it was important to us to um, be able to offer uh, homes for sibling groups because um, we think it's really important that these children have a chance to stay together, especially when they first come into fostering. They've had a horrendous time... They won't come into fostering because they just don't like where, where they are. They've come into fostering because they need, um, they need a change of scenery. They need um, to be with people that can look after them properly or they've come from a really bad situation and they need to get out of that really bad situation or um, maybe their, their birth family, maybe they haven't got any birth family and they need a new family. But whatever the reason is that they come into foster care, um, they've, they've come from a pretty bad situation, a pretty bad start. And to be able to keep those brothers and sisters together it, through that is really important. So sure. that's why we wanted to do um, sibling groups. And uh, so far, we've done quite a few sibling groups and they've all gone on to do really well. Fantastic. I suppose there's something about a brother and sister or brother to brother, sister to sister bond, when especially when maybe you might be feeling a lot of your world might be going a bit upside down, but you've still got someone there to start with who really understands you. So I guess that... Yeah, really I think it must thing. be really hard, especially the younger children... If they've um, going into a strange home with strange people they've never met before, they don't know what's going on, they don't understand, they might have to change school as well. So everything in their world is turned upside down. Yeah. That consistency of having their sibling there is really important to them, I think. Um, and um, to be able to offer a home where they can stay together, um, I think is just just a really good thing to be able to do. Absolutely, brilliant. Okay, can you tell us uh, a bit more about other foster carers that you speak to in your community? I've got quite a few friends now that are foster carers. Um, it's useful having friends that are foster carers because um, they are generally the only ones that you can talk to about a lot of these things Yeah. because a lot of it is confidential. You can't um, talk about um, some of the things that you might want to to other family members or people that aren't connected so having people that understand is really really important yeah absolutely and what's good with Cambridgeshire is that we have um there's a there's a big selection of foster carers there's yeah. a good community of foster carers I've uh, had the pleasure of meeting a few of them I can have one more to my list personally <laughs> today thank you um can you tell us a bit more about your experiences and your role in the CFCA so sorry that's the Cambridgeshire Foster Carer Association 
And there's not much to joining. You just have to let your supervising social worker know that you want to be a member of the CFCA. And um, then, because I'm the sort of person that I am, I got a bit more involved, and I'm now joint chair of the CFCA, along with Kevin Arrowsmith. Oh, congratulations. Lovely. So um, what do you do as the, uh, well, within your role? Do you uh, oversee a lot of the meetings? So the CFCA have, um, we try to have monthly or, or there or thereabouts meetings which are um, open to all CFCA members. We have a committee that helps organise and run the CFCA and they're the people that would um, uh, check posts on the Facebook group, for example, or maybe update the website or send emails out to foster carers and they would be the people that liaise with the fostering service and um, within the role that I do within the CFCA I mostly liaise with people like the fostering network and um, management levels within the fostering service to ensure that um, foster carers generally are looked after and their voice is heard within the fostering service. That's lovely. That's a really important thing to do. So uh, I'm glad we've got someone like yourself involved. That's fantastic. So um, can you tell us a bit more about the types of training that you've got from the local authority? The training that we've had is really varied. I yeah. mean, we've done everything from obviously your basic first aid and you've got certain mandatory courses that you need to do, like allegations, but also mental health first aid, um, uh, self-harming, um, online safety, yeah. um, there's a huge range. Uh, the training offering from Cambridgeshire is vast because they not only run their own courses but they also access other courses. Then you've got e-learning, some of the courses are face-to-face, -face, some are online. Um, so you can generally find something that suits you and suits your situation. And I, I mean, if I wanted to, I could probably do training every day of the week wow, um, nice. so there is quite a lot on offer and I try to do one or two a month fair enough well that'll keep you busy certainly absolutely and you, are you supported if there's something that you feel you might need a bit of training on to find it yeah the training team are really good and if there's something um, that you feel you um, want to find out more about you can either uh, communicate with the training team direct or you can go through your supervising social worker and they can sort of um, escalate that and, and advocate for you on that. That's really good. And can you tell us if you have any advice you might give to people who are thinking about maybe fostering? I think if you're thinking about fostering, um, you already have a pretty good idea of what might be involved because um, most people know fostering is about taking in the child and looking after them. Um, you have to be pretty dedicated. Sure. It's not easy. Um, it can be hard work, but it is incredibly rewarding. Um, we keep in contact with the vast majority of children that we've had um, live with us. And when you hear that they've passed their GCSEs or they're doing this or they've, they've taken part in a performance, when, when they came to you, they would, you know, wouldn't say boo to a goose. It, it does make you feel good. And, and that's, that's a really important part of it. Um, the financial side of it, you're not going to make money out of fostering. Um, we're here to provide for the children. Yes, it helps with the bills. Yes, it helps to um, make it possible for you to look after the children to the best of your ability. But it's it's not a, a, a money earner as such. It's not you're not going to be become rich off the back of fostering. Sure, but you, that's not why you go into it. Though. It's not why you go into it. You go into it because you want to make a difference. That's and it. And you really can make a difference. Um, it's, it's really important that some of these children that have had such hard, difficult starts in life get the right, go on the right path. Absolutely. Really, really quickly with yeah. the right people. And, you know, we just need more foster carers who are able to provide that sort of support. 100%. That's fantastic. Well, Tracy. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. I hope you can see you again another time.